And now I think we are live. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to welcome you to this webinar presented to you by the European Champions Alliance. My name is Andrea Vaughan. I'm one of the co-founders of the Alliance, and I will host this webinar today for you with Christian. Um, a few words on us and what we are um, as an association. So we are a non-for-profit association created in February 2020. And we're building an ecosystem of startups, scale-ups, SMEs, corporates, and industry experts that are open to European tech and European values. <clears throat> we are creating and we leverage our European network and we share uh, market knowledge with our members and the ecosystem. We activate joint business opportunities between our members and our ecosystem. And the goal, of course, is to create uh, more European technology champions and to support their growth. We organize a lot of events like this webinar, for example. We publish industry-specific information like buyer's guides, mappings, articles, interviews, everything that you can find on our website and our blog. We have about uh, 60 European members from different countries, mainly Germany, France, Switzerland, Belgium, and the Netherlands. And um, we also organize a lot of internal meetings between our members, networking opportunities, working sessions on specific topics. Um, that are important for those companies that want to grow in Europe and become European champions. And you, of course, can also become a member as a private person, as an expert, as a company, as a startup. And if you are interested in that, you can find all of the information on our website, european-champions.org. And if you have any questions, of course, you can leave them in the comments and let me know. So uh, without further ado, let's get started on the topic of today. Um, we'll have a quick Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So please, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the chat and we'll get back to them a little bit later on. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm very happy today that I can um, welcome Christian Hüttenhain uh, to our webinar. Uh, we had planned this webinar before, but um, it was not on the right time. So I'm happy that we're here back today. And um, so I've been waiting for this and for all of the information that Christian will give to us today. So he is. Uh, he will present himself, of course, but he is. I will just say that he's the director for strategic partnerships and co-innovation at Robert Bosch Venture Capital, and he runs the Open Bosch Initiative. So why are we doing this webinar today? Because of course, um, startups are um, innovation drivers and the source of technologies and business models for corporates. Um, so we all agree on this uh, today, and there are different possibilities for them to cooperate together. One, of course, is uh, corporate venture capital, which is the most, um, let's say, identified or most prominent instrument. Um, but there are a lot of others. Um, so the question is, if um, corporate venture capital is not an option for you or for the startup or for the corporate, what else, uh, what alternatives do we have? What else can we do? And this is something that we'll discuss today. So I'm really happy. Christian, I give you the word and I'm very um, curious on what you have to say. And thank, thank you for you, being Andrea. here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. In the following 20 minutes, I would like to give you the benefits and the business impact that venture clienting offers to you, to you and your corporate or to you and your startup. And I'm going to share my presentation now. I see a lot of um experienced colleagues in, in the participants list in the line so i'm looking forward to the discussion we will have afterwards do you see my screen not yet do you see it now yes it's coming yes we can see it thank you great so my presentation has two parts the first part is about why startups? Why is a corporation like Bosch interested in startups as a source of innovation? That's the first part. The second part is about who's open Bosch. Who are we? What do we do? Why do we do that? How do we do that? What is the process of venture clienting and how are the KPIs and all the insights about that? Before we come to that, Please give me the opportunity to get a better understanding of you. Uh, please go to Menti and um, answer some questions I'm interested in. Questions about you and your perspective. Please go to Menti. I think all of you know Menti. You can use your cell phone and type in the code 
or scan the QR code. And I'm going to switch over to, to the browser now to ask the questions over there. So, I think it's coming up. So the first question I have to you to get a better understanding is, uh, what's your role? Who, who do you work for? We have the following options, corporate innovation, CVC, institutional VC. We have academia, startups. Please give me a better understanding of, of where you come from. Okay, we have the first answers. That's great. It's good for me to know where you, what's your background, to have a, uh, have a focus on, on that uh, during my presentation. Because venture clienting is, is a, um, Open Bosch is the venture client unit of the Bosch Group, and we are um, making partnerships with startups easy for Bosch. We are an internal service provider for the Bosch colleagues. And um, I think it's, it's, um, it's interesting to, to see where, which perspective you have. So we have three uh, corporate innovators. There are probably more coming up. That's great. OK, I will come to the, to the next question. So um, what do you think are the following formats of corporate venturing? Uh, the options are incubation, acceleration, venture building, venture capital, venture clienting. There are much more, but these are the most important for me. And I have two two dimensions on the on the chart. The first one is on the on the vertical. Yeah, that's exciting. That's important. That's that's of high relevance to me. Or uh, no, not so important. That's boring. Startups, just a bunch of hippies in a garage. That's a hype. Or on the horizontal, we have the dimensions never heard of. Don't know what you're talking about. And uh, I know all about it. I'm an expert on this. Please give me a better understanding of wh where you. Where you are for this. Okay, great. The first answer was uh, venture clienting, not that much known. That's good. This is about venture clienting. If you know it as well, uh, that's good. If you don't like it, please stay in the line. I'm, I'm trying to convince you of venture clienting. That's great. Okay, some more answers coming in. Okay, next question. Last question from my side. Um, quick quiz, quick poll. How many large corporates do you think have established a dedicated venture client unit status made this year? What do you think? We have three options, 15 corporates. There are 15 with a headquarter in the EU. Uh, and 29, there are 12 with uh, headquartering you, and 55, nine of them European. What do you think? Okay, that's interesting. So the correct answer to this question, you will receive at the end of my presentation. <laughs> Small cliffhanger. Uh, so please bear with me until the end. I'm, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Okay, let's come to the first part of my presentation. The first part is about why startups? Why are startups relevant for Bosch? And what is the Bosch perspective on startups through Open Bosch today? And I think uh, that is important to, under, to understand the venture client unit of, of Bosch and to also have maybe a better grip of Bosch in this ecosystem. So the first thing is we see 1.3 million new tech startups out there globally every single year. 1.3 million. That's a lot. There are so many startups out there. And in the, in the last decade, it, it has increased a lot. And um, most of them are not meeting our requirements, but we are looking for top startups. The top startup for us is uh, great talent, experienced founders, great uh, um a product, a USP, clear USP, strongly funded. Why do we see so many startups? Why do we see so many good startups out there? 
Okay, the first reason is technology change. Of course, you know it. It became quite an easy and cheap to launch a startup. When the 1990s, you needed a couple of million euro to found a business. Today, you need a few thousand euros to compete with Bosch. Due to horizontal scaling, Amazon Web Services, free tools and templates on business model innovation, it became quite cheap and easy to launch a startup. Second reason, macroeconomic drivers. We are coming, we are leaving now the decade of low interest rates. Money has been cheap. Um, uh, capital was moving to riskier assets and startups and VC funds as a form of risky assets have been flooded with the money. The, the system was flooded with money. In the dark blue uh, uh, columns, you see the OECD uh, countries, VC investment volumes. And in the light blue, you see the corporate R&D spendings on transformational projects. So not core, not adjusted, transformational projects. And what you see is that's a hype. There's a lot of money in the system. The, the first quarter of, the, of last year's 2021 was higher than the fall year in 2017. Unbelievable much money in the, in the system. One reason why we see so many, so many good startups. And um, the third reason, probably you know that, you were aware of that or face that in your own corporate um, is the the topic of organizational ambidexterity the two-handedness corporates of the size of bosch struggle to on the one hand exploit existing opportunities and and, and ha producing and uh, manufacturing in a standardized efficient way to serve customers and at the same time to radically innovate and uh, disrupt your own business Big corporates struggle at that. And um, if, if you're working in innovation, you know that uh, if you're talking to a manufacturing colleague, innovation is always second priority if you have a screaming customer. And startups are a great way to bring an innovation without messing up the organization. That's one reason we see from our perspective why we see so many um, also colleagues leaving founding startups and, and rising startups. And the last reason is the strong competition in this field. Um, a quick poll uh, over here are listed eight startups. All of them are meeting our requirements of a top startup. Strong team, strong IP, uh, massively funded. What do you think they have in common? I tell you, all of them offer a software component that is part of the iPhone. So even in a high volume product like the iPhone, um, there, there is the use of, of young startup solutions. And there are more and more corporates out there who are great in partnering and um, who make use of great solutions. So this is causing uh, push on, uh, pressure on Bosch. And in the last decade, we changed our approach on, on those startups. And the first effect uh, was we had to review our image we have of startups. When you, uh, a couple of years ago, when you went to manufacturing and talked about startups, the people that have in mind, the colleagues have in mind a 20 year old academic IT student who likes to code and who has a business idea and is asking for seed funding. That is not my picture of a top startup. My picture of a top startup is, for example, here, Stardot, an Israeli company focusing on quickly loading batteries. Um, when they have been a few years old, one, two, three years old, um, 20, 30 people, they raised 120 million to solve this problem. Which Bosch department of 20, 30 people has 120 million to solve one single problem? So the relation between capital resource and business focus has flipped in the last decade. In the past, it was we are the big Bosch and this little startup want to find. No, it's it's other way around. We are meeting the companies on eye level there. They have much more money than Bosch and the picture of a big corporate change. That's the first thing we had to review our image we have in mind when we talk about startups or top startups. The second thing is we advocate for um, treating the venture capital out there as R&D budget of Bosch that Bosch did not have to raise to make use of that solution. That's, that's a small revolution for Bosch people. Treating the VC money out there as R&D budget of Bosch that Bosch did not have to raise to make use of that solution. That's, that's a really important part um, 
and, and that's what we're doing today. So that's the perspective on startups as a as a quick as a quick startup. So just to uh, to keep in touch with you, please go back to Menti and give me feedback uh, how you uh, how you see that. Give me a quick feedback. I would like to go back to Menti and have a, call, a quick poll. Please rate the following statements as a conclusion of my first part. Do you agree startups will become a stronger source of innovation for corporates? Okay, six, two colleagues fully agree. And the second thing is corporate should treat external VC money as an own R&D budget. Yeah, mostly agree. So you're on my side with that. That's great. Thank you for the feedback. Before we come to the second part, quick questions up, up front. Would you please rate the following statements? My corporate is well prepared to partner with startups. And if you are from a startup, please treat this as a, my corporate, uh, your client. Is your client well prepared to partner with startups? So if you're from another function, uh, please talk about the corporates you're uh, involved with. And then personally, do you yourself feel prepared to partner with startups? Because in the second part, we talk about venture clienting. I think this is a very lean and efficient process to make use of startups as a source for innovation. Okay, great. Thanks for that feedback. Okay, let's go back to the presentation and come to the second part. Okay, let's talk about RBVC, Robert Bosch Venture Capital. So this is the RBVC team. Um, 30 people, five locations, uh, um, West Coast, USA, Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Tel Aviv, Shanghai, very small business unit, probably the smallest business unit of Bosch Group. Um, if there are four people going to the canteen, it's fully crowded. And um, Open Bosch is part of RBVC. We have two business modes at Robert Bosch Venture Capital. The first one is corporate venture capital in the classical way. We do that since 2017. We have 870 million under management. Um, sweet spot is Series A. Uh, we invest in the startups uh, with strategic relevance to the Bosch Group, uh, strongly technology focused. And this is a successful business, business when it comes to earning profits. So RBVC is very good in, uh, in buying and selling shares of startups and earning profits. Before Open Bosch, we have not been so good when it comes to transferring innovation and cold solutions to the business units. Because if because the colleagues work in the push, um, that means like they meet great startups and they go to the business unit and say, hey, I have a great startup. You should take a look. That's an awesome technology. This is of relevance to you. And then the business unit answers, oh yeah, that's great. Hey. Um, Please come back in a year. I really like it, but I, I, I'm really busy. So it's not really an efficient way to bring in innovation. It's because of the push principle. With Open Bosch, with the, our venture client unit, we are working in the pull. We are only working in the pull. We are uh, running through the business units. We are collecting pain points. We're trying to understand what is you, what is it that you don't get solved? What's the issue? What are problems where you don't find an established provider? And please let us take a look and, and screen and scout some startups to see what is what is out there, the perfect solution for you out of the startup field. So Open Bosch, the venture client unit, is a service provider to the Bosch internal uh, business units to bring in competitive advantage through top startups. And just to uh, avoid a misconception in the beginning, we are not investing. We are talking about buying the product, testing the product. It's not about buying the startup. That's the venture capital part. Venture clienting is about buying the product. And the philosophy is, if you want to use an iPhone, why do you buy an Apple stock? Buy an iPhone. So it's really about getting the solutions, test them quickly in a standardized way and make use of them before you reinvent the wheel. So 
Um, Open Bosch was founded in 2018. Uh, at that time, we, we um, researched a lot of formats and tried to, to find a new, a leaner way to make use of startups as a source for innovation. And Bosch has the complete toolbox. We have all the, the tools out there. Uh, incubation, acceleration, M&A, venture building, uh, shared resources, uh, hackathons, whatever. There's everything out there. We did not have a venture client unit. And um, this Spanish university here says that the venture clienting approach is the leanest, the, mo the cost most cost efficient and the quickest process when it comes to make use of startups as a source for innovation and this is what we what we set up so uh, again the um when it comes to using startups and, and and partnering with startups there are um lots of tools in the toolbox of the bosch group we have we have all the tools there are but um the two um most important for us, or uh, the two, uh, the ones we are responsible for is uh, venture capital is for us a financial return vehicle and uh, an early warning system for the Bosch Group. And when it comes to bringing in innovation and core business impact through top startups, it's the venture clienting approach. And uh, sometimes we see that 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 colleagues mix up the intentions, and uh, uh, but for us, it's it's really having the right tool for the right intention. Uh, can you still hear me? Are you still there? Are there any questions to that? We can still hear you. Perfect. Great. Thanks for the feedback. Okay. So let's come to, to Open Bosch, to the, to the venture client unit. How does that work now? So we focus on business impact. That's a ver very important part within our process. Business impact for us is... Um, revenue enabling, cost reduction, time to market, de-risking, in some way bringing uh, an, an impact to the business of the Bosch uh, uh, division within the pull principle. And um, let me let me show you, it's not a department. Open Bosch is not a department. It's a network, a very important approach. We don't want to be the uh, uh, ivory tower out of the venture arm of the Bosch Group. No, we want to have a very strong reach into the real business of the business units. And over here, you see the, the current team. So we have in every uh, in every division of Bosch, you know, Bosch, uh, strongly in automotive, industrial technology, security systems, household supplies, electro electrical uh, power tools. and. We have a lot of business units, and in every business unit, we have a venture manager who basically does my role, divisional specific, to bring in the evaluation competence on the product portfolio and have um, to bring in the the know-how on startups for that uh, for that business. And also, we have in the regions colleagues sit, sitting, and we have associates who help us screening and scouting um, the startups and 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 fulfilling that process. And this is uh, what the process looks like. So this is maybe the most important slide. Uh, if you take only one message away with you uh, out of my presentation, please take the following. This, everything else is downhill from here. So that's the venture clienting process for us. No rocket science. I'm not going to talk about single processes or uh, specific startups or technologies. Uh, let's talk about the process because that's common sense or that's, that's quite public. Um, the venture clienting process for us has five phases. The first phase is a discover phase. There it is about having a problem deep dive with the business unit to really understand what is the issue we are trying to get solved here. And is there no established provider to, to offer a solution? Um, a, a, a strong challenge for us is the partnership readiness, mostly not on the startup side. Sometimes it is, but mostly not on the startup side, mostly on the Bosch business unit side. Do we have a real pain point to solve here? Or is that just a benchmarking interest or mm, just getting inspiration out of the ecosystem? That's not what we're doing. We are something like an innovation purchasing that is not located within purchasing because there the tools and templates and processes would, would, would kill this market. We are sitting within the venture arm and have a very lean setup. And we assess the partnership readiness of the Bosch Group to make sure that we have a small decisive team to conduct the PUC and to test the solution that brings in business impact for the Bosch Group. So that's part of the first uh, discover phase. And then we start with the startup sourcing. 
to identify the potential and the possible startup solutions out there and to have a digestible list to present to the uh, business unit. The second phase is the assessment phase, where we really take a deep dive into the quality of the startup, into the um, problem solution fit, strategic assessment, and of course, the leading assessment. Is this the best startup for that pain point out there? Are we playing with Bavaria Munich here, or is that Schalke 04? I'm, I'm allowed to make that joke because I'm, uh, I grew up in, in, in Ruhrpott, so I, I'm allowed to make jokes about Schalke 04, whatever. So uh, that's the, the, the second phase is the assessment phase. And we really, we don't want to take a, a, a startup that is kind of fitting to that problem and we work with them just because they're close by. We want to work with the best startups out there. Was there a question? Is there a question in the, in the... Someone's asking about Barca on Madrid, you know, for the football. Oh, okay, thanks. Great. Yeah, we will, we will postpone that to the discussion. Okay, coming to the uh, to the next phase, the purchasing phase. Our purchasing process takes two hours. So if you deal with the Bosch Group and you know the automotive automotive purchasing, um, where you have an oligopolistic market, uh, you have high technical requirements and uh, lots of uh, requirements on 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 technology, on compliance, on, on risk diversity. And there's a lot of rules. And of course, purchasing within automotive of the Bosch Group is a different process, takes months, at least weeks to get something done. And you need a budget in advance. And it's a different process with us, bringing in the startup solution to bring in speed on, on innovation. The purchasing process is very lean. So we get, we get the quotation from the startup, we, we align on it and negotiate quickly. And then we take it to, to our colleague, please order it, and then it's done. And we get, get done, the, we, we get started with the POC immediately. So a very strong part, uh, and um, from our perspective, a convincing part of the process is the purchasing phase very quick. And the, uh, the, the closing uh, is, is uh, we have a standard NDA, no specialty. It's about speed in the process. Then we do the pilot. Um, our pilots take uh, on average four months. We, we try to push a decision at the end to keep things lean and quickly. And um, we assess also before the pilot in the assessment phase, the business impact, of course, to have a clear target. What are we going to try to reach in this, in this? And then at the end of the pilot, we are starting with the adoption preparation to have the decision. Was that what we expected it to be or is that Wow, we had a different intention. We're gonna leave that startup and, and and go go further with someone else. So the adoption phase is really about if we decided to go on with this uh, with this startup and this solution, how to continue, how to bring in this innovation, and how to monitor it uh, on the long term business impact. So this is the venture clienting process. At the end, no rocket science, but for us, a new thing, 2018, when we implemented that to have a very lean and quick approach to make use of startups as a source for innovation and to make Bosch more innovative, quickly more innovative. This was a, was a really a game changer here. Uh, a few KPIs. So um, the process is really live since the beginning of 2019, end of 2018. We have consulted since then thousand Bosch teams on not reinventing the wheel again, but making use of startups. We have a strong network within the um, venture manager community of the Bosch Group. We do roughly 50 POCs per year. So almost every, every week, there is a new innovative solution tested within the Bosch business units or in the plants or in manufacturing sites. And um, a, a POC uh, um, takes roughly four months. And we're talking about the really low costs. If you compare that to other formats of corporate venturing, Let's take venture capital. Uh, how much is a, a average venture capital deal to bring in a startup? Or let's talk about an, uh, an acceleration a program of six months um, with 30 teams on, on or let's 10 teams on one uh, business pain point. This is really lean. This is really cost efficient. On average, 12,000 euro per POC is really not a lot of money. And we try to treat the VC investments as R&D of Bosch, uh, R&D budget of Bosch, to really 
keep it lean and to bring in quickly new solutions. So what is part of the, the success story of Open Bosch? And I want to, uh, I really want to mention that because it's a, it's a lessons learned from the past. We have top management ba uh, backing. So uh, Jiwan Stefan Hartung, our, our CEO of the Bosch Group, um, is part of the Open Bosch team in the sense of we are reporting our business impact KPIs to him. He's directly interested of what we do. And um, this is uh, putting a certain management attention to topics, to, to POCs and to, um, yeah, this is helping the business unit to get things going because they know there is backing behind. Another thing that's that's important for us is this this um, yeah cultural change behind. We we have an open Bosch forum we do every year where we bring together um, the Bosch internal colleagues, great startups um, uh, from the ecosystem, keynote speakers, and we have lots of sessions about it, operational sessions where we really get into the discussion how to get things going within Bosch. And uh, during this forum, we also award the best Bosch startup cooperation. Last year, the, the startup Kalimoto and uh, Rossum, they received it. Uh, was there a question in the in the chat? Andrea? No, it was it was me asking for questions. No question okay. yet. Okay. So having events and offering the platform within the Bosch group to get this process going is a, is a key learning for us. And it's so far quite successful. Of course, another thing, we have our own database. I think everybody in the business is working with Pitchbook, Crunchbase, Traction, with all the databases out there. And that's nothing we, we have in-house. We also use those uh, databases. But additionally, for all the POCs we do and for all the startup contexts where we have um, more than one talk, we really use our own um, platform. It's called Join. And it's a, it's a very important part to bring in every function of the Bosch Group who's dealing with startups to one single platform to have full transparency within the big team of 400,000 employees on, on all the startups that are working with the Bosch Group. That's a very important success factor here. Um, a bit of information on how we see the development in the business units. So uh, when we started in 2018, we did not start with every business immediately, of course. So we onboarded business units one by one by getting them to the forum, training the process, using the database and, and, and uh, advertising for uh, using our resources of venture associates to screen and scout great solutions and, and really pressing them to track business impact and to, to assess the business impact before getting started. Business impact for us is the only KPI we're really interested in and um, what we focus on. And really, this is, this is important. And after they conducted a PUC, the second phase is having an ambassador of the open Bosch process within the business unit. So we recruited a venture manager, and then we slowly get one-on-one -on -one to establish a, a divisional venture client team that is um, interpreting this process divisionally specific. Is there a question in the? Is there a question in the? Yeah, we're, in wait, the... we're waiting for it. Go go ahead. I think it's okay. <laughs> okay, just uh, just uh, step in if there is. So, um, uh, Andrea, one of your questions in advance was okay. What's now the benefit? Uh, of this process. We have benefits to the Bosch Group business units, but benefits to the to the startups. Let's uh, start with the business uh, with the business units because they're actually my client. So um, and this is just because uh, what do I lack of? Actually, I don't lack of great startups. There are so many great startups out there. What I lack of still today after three years and a, a quite a successful uh, road so far, we're still lacking uh, of um, the Bosch colleagues who have the interest, the commitment, the awareness, the capacity, the budget, the, the time to deal with great solutions and to bring in startups. We are conducting 50 PUCs per year, but looking at a company of the size of 80 billion and 400,000 employees, that's actually not a lot yet. It's, it needs to be much more. And that's what we're heading to. And um, my clients are the business units. And what we offer to them is is great innovation, co-innovation of great startups. We offer the funding to keep the process lean. 
the um, the budget to conduct the PUCs to buy the startup solutions is from OpenBosch. It's it's our budget. The business unit do not need to plan that in advance a year ahead, but we have it. That's that makes it quick. We bring in speed. We bring in um, the evaluation of the of the startups and, uh, and the ecosystem and the experience of treating uh, dealing with startups. We bring in cons consulting capacity and the resources and the tools and templates on on legal on on technology and compliance to do that to bring in the startup solutions and that, those are the benefits for our business units. The benefits for the startups, of course, are they get to to sell their product. They get an early client, uh, a, a client who has a lots of experience in industrializing, um, uh, like Bosch. They get a they get an insight after testing the solutions with us. Um, they get to learn how a, a corporate things and how purchasing within a corporate works. And we, they get a they get a friend within Bosch through us. And through that, they get speed and, of course, the network. They have access to our network within the business units that helps scaling quickly and that helps to become a successful startup if you win Bosch as a client and have this on your reference list, I think. So this is what the benefit uh, for the startups are if they're working with Open Bosch. So um, if there are no questions directly now, I would um, I would like to ask you coming back to Menti to have uh, a quick review on um, on this second part of uh, the venture clienting process. So please uh, go to Menti and answer the following question uh, and rate this uh, this um, statement for me to get a better understanding on how how you see it. So the first statement is. Venture clienting offers business impact for corporates and for startups. And the second uh, agreement is I personally see a benefit of venture clienting for me and my business. Sometimes that differs. Mostly it's uh, that the second statement is less, that the people say, yeah, that's a great business impact, but not for me. Uh, I'm special. I'm different. Startups don't help me, right? That's something sometimes uh, that uh, a result I've, I face. So far, it's not. We have four people answered. Thank you for the for the feedback. Um, so there are a couple of questions, Christian. Yes. Just let me know when you want to when you want to take them. Yes. Yes. Let's come to the. Uh, last question. Last question before we come to the as many. So yeah. um, for the corporates, what do you? What is? Uh, I would like to know what's your biggest challenge. Please pick three out of the out of the offerings we have. What is the biggest challenge for you in your uh, in your business? And if you're not a corporate, if you're startups, please answer in in the sense of what do you think your uh, the the clients you deal with, the corporates you deal with, what what are their challenges? So we have screening and scouting startups. That's sometimes really a challenge to find the best ones. Having a quick purchasing process, um, having at hand directly the capacities to manage projects and to conduct POCs and pilots. Having a project funding, a small budget to, to buy solutions. Uh, having legal advice on partnerships. Fighting not invented here syndrome in the big organizations. And then the last one is internal management attention. What do you think is the biggest challenge for you? Already some answers. That's interesting. So sometimes we often or we we see that finance project funding is very popular. It's not over here. Uh, interesting. Great. So my last question is the is the quiz from the beginning. But uh, before we come to that, let's let's uh, discuss the questions in the um, in the chat. Okay, so we have several questions. Um, one question from Peter, I mean, he has two questions. Um, the first is, how do you assess startups who already have investors on board? Uh, great, that's, I mean, um, we are really, um, we are looking for startups with a, with a funding because 
handling so many startups, we're looking for a reference point. And if there is a business angel or VC out there who says, I like that startup, I invest my own personal money into that startup because I really believe in the in the technology, that's a great reference point. So we we like to have, we focus on startups with a VC funding, with a project, uh, with a series A funding or, or a seed funding at least to just to, that, that's a filter for us that helps us to, to filter the, the, um, the volume starters. Does that answer the yeah. question or is the question behind? Yeah, I think, I mean, it was also one of my questions where I said, um, my question maybe adds another question to that is how do you assess startups who already have investors on board and how do you assess startups that already are working with other corporates that already have done the assessment? So do you kind of, exchange with other corporates to see okay they have already screened the startup and they have all they, they've you know passed the process do you have some kind of agreements with other so on the one hand out there in this ecosystem there is some kind of competition that there is an exchange generally but what i learned in the past is that the that the pain points we're heading to are so specific and are so bosh individually that it mostly doesn't help or doesn't gain any insight that if there's a corporate out there who says we implemented that, that we immediately take it. No, no, we we follow our process step by step and start with the assessment and the uh, the um, discover phase and then with the assessment. And um, we really focus on the, the, the fit of the pain point to the solution of the startup. And if the, if the startup we are bringing in um, already has corporate clients, that's great. We don't we don't want startups that are dependent on Bosch or that that break together if they if they if Bosch is not buying the solutions at the end. We want to have mature startups on eye level, and if they have a corporate traction already, that's great. That's not a, that's not an issue at all. That's a benefit. Okay, so so it doesn't get the the process doesn't get quicker if they already work with some of your peers. Mm, the leading assessment gets quicker. There are some parts that get quicker, but at the end, it's really about the, the fit, the fit of, yeah. of um, and I mean, it's also uh, have, dealing with corporations and, and solutions in an early phase, that's always a, also about trust. Is the Bosch team and the startup team, do they fit? Can they work together? Can this, is this a, is this a, a good marriage or is this uh, struggling in the beginning? So um uh, it can if they have a corporate client it can accelerate things but it uh, mostly it's um it's really about the how does the individual solution fit and how's the team bringing in uh and, and joining the the teamwork with the bosch colleagues okay so we have a, qu a second question from olivier um he's asking that uh, i had the same question what is the success rate of the pocs and what is your involvement in the scaling of the poc Okay, very interesting question. So the um, the success rate differs between process innovation and product innovation, because uh, when I talk about process innovation, I'm referring mostly to our internal processes or to our manufacturing sites. Because if we are the client, things are easier. We get things done better if we are the client, and um, the the success rate is is roughly fifty percent. When it comes to product innovation, especially in the automotive field, that's a little bit less, um, but it's still quite good. Um, and we don't want to get to a, a success rate of 100% or 90%, because if we would have a success rate of 90%, we would probably not really scratch the disruptive topics. So having a high success rate is not the, not the focus. We include that half or, or two thirds of the POCs are, are, are ending with no cooperation, with no uh, continuing partnership, or, or there are so many forms of continuation or, or adoption at the end. You have a, a joint development, you, you have a supplier-client relationship, you have a, uh, there are so many, there, there are so many uh, ways of uh, working together at the end, uh, M&A sometimes. And, um, um, we don't want to get to 100%. We want to have uh, um, uh, a focus on business impact. 
What was okay. the, que the second question? There was only, only one part. It was, uh, what is your involvement in the scaling of the POCs? Oh, so um, so we focus on this on the four month uh, entry, and we focus on the POC. And uh, I mean, not a, um, POCs are very different if you do one in in, in uh, Bosch Service Solutions, which is a, a outsourcing provider and services IT provider, or if you do that in automotive, POCs differ, of course. But uh, we focus on the four month uh, uh, POC pilot time, and uh, we help with the adoption and prepare that with the business unit. But after this process, after the venture clienting process, at the end, the business has to be done by the business unit. There is a handover to the business unit and they are, of course, the business units are, are um, involved during the full process. But um, the, the scaling it at the end is apart from um, uh, legal advice and consulting on the process and, and negotiation, mediation when it comes to uh, conflicts in the process. Apart from that, it's the business of the business unit after the venture clienting process ends. Does that answer the question? I think I think so. Yes. Um, I will um, shuffle a little bit in the questions and um, uh, Peter, if you could specify your question about how do startups assess their relevance to Bosch? I'm not so sure I understand the question. If, if you do, Kristen, I don't I'm not so sure if I understand it, but maybe we can go to another question. He says, as a major partner in the high tech Runda Fund, do you internally coordinate that engagement with Open Bosch? Sorry, I didn't get that. I was looking for the question. Say again. As as you are as a major partner in the high tech Gründer Fund, yes. Do you internally coordinate that engagement with Open Bosch? So, what is the connection maybe between the two, or are yes. you the ones? So, uh, HTGF is uh, we are we are partner in the HTGF, and there is a close uh, there is a close connection. Um, we see we know the startups uh, from them. We have them in our databases. At the end, we are focusing on the pull. We are not pushing uh, HTGF startups into the Bosch group. It's not. It's. It's not. My, I'm not doing sales for HTGF startups. I'm still working in the pull. And sometimes we have the overlap, and then that's a benefit because then we know immediately who to contact because the the, the connections are close to HTGF. But um, apart from that, there is no. We there's no push. There's no. We are not selling. Uh, their their startups uh, in in, other, in in some way. Okay. Selling the solutions themselves. Uh, yeah, and I understand. So um, I, I guess the other question uh, was how do you how do startups assess their relevance to Bosch? So I don't know if you understand uh, the the question. I think what's behind this is um, how. How do the startups from their side, uh, once they're contacted by you or in your process, assess if it's relevant for them to work with you or not? So at the end, they need to bring a, a the the venture client, the the real client on the Bosch side. They need to have a clue who is that. Um, we don't find the client for them. They need to have a very precise uh, uh, value proposition, and then we can get started. Then we know how to how to get things going. But at the end, the bigger work, uh, I found a startup myself. I, I know how, how difficult that is. The, 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 the more work is to be very precisely uh, in the value proposition of your solution and to really know who is your customer and what is the pain point of your customer. Mostly you immediately know also how to address them. And uh, we can help with the contacts um, to bring in the, uh, or to, to connect to the, to the real client. And we want to keep things lean. So a POC um, negotiation is a lean group. In the past, a decade ago, Bosch was uh, was renting a, a minibus and was driving with 15 lawyers and 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 uh, 20 engineers to the startup to assess all the risks and to get the cooperation do done uh, or get it going after two years. But we don't do that. We try to keep it lean. So it's the startup CEO. It's run from the open Bosch part, and then it's the pain point owner of the business unit, so the, the real venture client. And in this small group, we get things going, trying to be decisive and, and, and start the, the, the discussion. And um, yeah. 
Okay, maybe maybe a follow up question from uh, Jerome because you were just talking about the risk. Is how do you address the risk perspective? So how long will the startup that you have found will be able to to keep up and to provide its uh, super solution for you? So the maturity of the startup is one quality criteria for us. We mostly uh, avoid pre-seed seed startups. We really uh, um, focus on mature startups, Series A startups who have already um, a, a paying client or who have already uh, conducted POCs, who know how to deal with the corporate like like Bosch, because Bosch is quite a, a, a huge and a complicated company, and um, a pre-seed startup will never have uh, the um, or will probably assumingly will not have the the strength and the patience to deal with a corporate client like Bosch. So we try to avoid that through checking the maturity in advance. Apart from that, um, it's really about the startup and, and an open communication during the PUC to make sure that both sides meet the expectations, right? It's our, mm. our task to mediate and to negotiate and moderate. Um, okay, so the questions keep on uh, flowing in. Um, just a, maybe just a topic from uh, Isabel. So she said she agrees the joint venture, pro the joint value proposition is so critical to convince everyone to jump on board. Um, but I want to come back to another question also from uh, Jerome. So he said uh, venture clienting is one form of B2B co-creation that you differentiated from VC uh, investment. So what about technical co-development? Mm. Technical, so venture clienting is not necessarily technical co-development. We want to be a client. I want to treat the startup as a supplier and I want to make things in the process quick by acting as a client. I don't want to waste Bosch resources on trying to help you, which sometimes makes things complicated if Bosch engineers try to play startup. That, you are the startup is the is the supplier and Bosch is the client and we open with Open Bosch we open a quick and lean and easy way to get things started within the Bosch group for the specified supplier group startup. But we are not co-developing. Sometimes within the PUC this develops and or this can be an adoption strategy co-development. But at the beginning, it, venture clienting is about really really being a, a client and having a precise pain point um, and to find a startup that is matching to that pain point quickly to get things going. So it's really not about co-creation can be a part of it, but it's not the focus. Okay, so a follow up question on this uh, from Israel is how do you fight the not invented here syndrome? <laughs> yeah, that's, goes the holy, with the co -creation. that's the holy grail. Um, uh, I think it's a mixture of things. It's a mixture of things. Uh, the first thing is to really understand um, not coming into people bashing. In the past, um, there was like, oh, we are too slow. We have to be quicker. And no, no, it's within the role. A big corporation like Bosch is highly separated into functional uh, or is in a functional separation. It's working highly functionally separated. And uh, when you talk to Bosch, um, in the past you have then uh, head of compliance, head of legal, head of engineering, head of, you have like 15 people who have different hats and have different KPIs and they make things complicated because on the startup side, they mostly have a CTO, CEO, CTO, and they the compromise to make, the negotiation to make, they do in their own hat. Like if you have only one CEO, he's going to find a way to make it things compliant uh, and effective and with business impact to the to the client. But on our side, there are stronger, um, yeah, stronger intentions, and every the role wants to make sure that their their perspective and their KPI uh, is covered, and this makes things complicated and we we try not to bash them or try to make ah you gotta get becomes quicker no 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 but m focusing the people just do their job and we should bring in things when they are mature for example legal in our poc process 
legal is not part of it because all the legal risks there are, we will solve after the, um, the, the, the POC. Uh, maybe to give you an uh, analogy, if you have a date uh, and, and on the first day of the date, you bring an, a marriage contract and put it on the, on, on the desk, that's not gonna conv that's not gonna build trust. So within the PUC, we're trying to build trust. We we have a legal NDA. It's not about IP transfer. We keep our IP. You start up, keep your IP, and it's just about getting to know each other, understanding the pain point, and finding out as quick as possible: is our pain point, is your solution, is that fitting? Does that help? Then, and this time, this can take some weeks. Um, then we can talk about legal. So legal is not part of the beginning. They had their requirements with standard NDAs and stuff covered in the beginning, but they're not part of the POC to make things not too complicated. So um, I think the, the not, not invented here syndrome is the first thing is to see, okay, it's not about the people, it's about their roles and to have a systemic uh, organizational development perspective on this process. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I think, old school creating lighthouses. You need to have success stories. You need to find successful POC and you need to show business impact financially, not having nice events. Everybody had met a startup and they have some sushi and uh, that was nice and everybody's happy going home and there's no business impact involved. That's a problem. And there are still formats like that existing also in Bosch where there's great beer, great talk, super fun colleagues but the business impact is lacking at the end that doesn't help bosch and that doesn't help the startup either so if the startup they're eager to win bosch as a client and then they're waiting and wasting wasting time on on not decisive uh, 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 bosch uh, people so it's really about pressing the bosch people to be quick and decisive and to to have mature startups who who have alternatives and uh, to get things uh, quickly to to um, yeah to raise a lighthouse that's the thing. We do lots of marketing, internal marketing, internal only. Open Bosch Award, Open Bosch Forum. We take the people to the um, to the slush, to the uh, bits and bretzels. To we we do we do some uh, events, but we try to see the personal benefit of our venture managers. It should be of benefit to their career. If you work in corporate innovation, you probably know that having a supporting function as as a as an innovator, that's not really pushing your career. In a, in a traditional Tayloristic company, you make a career if you develop something on your own. If that that's my product and I developed it, that's helping your career. If you say, "Hey, I've, I just found a startup. They they solved that already, and we can work with them right immediately," where's that's uh, in, in old school business, that was not really something to make a career of. So that's something where we would try to push uh, HR and, and, and management and to uh, have an awareness of if we bring in a startup that has a solution already, immediately, they developed it already, Bosch would take a lot of capacities and, and years to develop that. L let's bring in them to have an awareness of, 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 the, of the organization that this is a benefit that needs to be addressed. That's time consuming, but that's a part of it. No, I talked a lot. Sorry. Okay. No, but there are two questions. That, yeah, there are two questions that came in while you were speaking, and it's uh, Jerome and Isabel. They have the same uh, uh, question, basically. So, did you get the support from change management, also from the change management teams, to accelerate the move? And uh, the second question is, um, how do you measure, or do you have indicators of startup cooperation readiness and its evolution? Okay. Uh, first question: uh, change management. Um, uh, I've myself uh, done an, uh, um, an education in, uh, in system change management at ISP in Wiesloch, and I, I think I'm, I have a good uh, evaluation competence, but mostly adding an additional function of the Bosch group to the talks makes things complicated. So we try to keep it lean and try to keep the functions really lean in the sense of the startup, the sales guy of the startup, our pay point owner, one person of us, and let's get started. No, no change management involved. And we try to do the change by focusing on the business and not, not having, um, that doesn't, that shouldn't, shouldn't say that an experienced change manager isn't, isn't a value of, of course it is. If you have persons who, if the venture manager in the business unit 
has a background in change management, awesome. That's that's great. And the functions of our venture manager is really diverse. That's something we learned. It's not about having persons only from business development or from engineering. Or from, it's really across all functions. And um, it's about the persons and their motivation. It's not about the, the functional background of the department. Um, the second question after the change management question was, um, how do you measure or do you have indicators of startup cooperation readiness and its evolution? Um, so there are so many KPIs. There are so many measures at the end. We um, we try to keep it simple. Uh, we we check the maturity by our uh, by our gut feeling after the first impression. We check the matur maturity on the on the uh, on the pitch uh, and on on the um, financial situation where they're in, if they have already a VC reference or a BA reference. And at the end, then it's about the uh, the process of um, the POC, how get things how get things started and how's the negotiation and purchasing uh, talks. There is no checklist apart mm. from that. Um, OK, um, I, I, I need I need to ask one another uh, two questions still and then i think we'll have to stop because they, they keep on coming in um but there's one uh question from michael and then another one from olivier which is also interesting so michael said when did you what was the reason for you to uh what was the reason for you at bosch to start venture clienting so um mm, success have a lot, has a lot of fathers uh, so when I started, it, it really was about finding a, a process that helps us in a very quick, a quick and lean way to bring in innovation. Because the venture capital colleagues, they're earning lots of money. They have a great business impact through their own profits. But at the end, it's not efficient. If you want to bring in, from technology perspective, want to bring in a new innovation, that you buy a startup that you buy a, a corporation that's a or that you buy a share of a corporation that's uh so management is uh, was asking what's the new abs the new ASP, is the new e-bike where are the products the technologies the processes that that will improve um the life of bosch in the future and what is the rbvc share for for that benefit and that was the task and that's why we we in uh, in uh, implemented this process Okay. Um, and then there's a, one question from Olivier. Do you restrict yourself to team up with startups or also look at bigger companies like SMEs since those can also have the right innovative solutions? Of course. I mean, uh, SMEs are not the, far, are not the focus of, of OpenBosch. So OpenBosch does not. But the Bosch Group purchasing does, of course. We have an innovation purchasing that is also including SMEs, of course. It's just not part of the OpenBosch process because that would kill the setup. I have okay. still one and slide. I have, Sorry. Yeah, I have one question if you if you if you allow. Um, I still have time. Uh, my question is um, of course we always look for at it from a European perspective. So where do the startups come from that you work with? Are they mainly from Germany? Are they from Europe? Are they from all over the world? So I think there, my answer is not surprising that it, it that it comes from the strong ecosystems we see in the regions. That means USA and China are very strong. We have a very strong ecosystem in Israel, much stronger than uh, than the uh, economic size of Israel. Um, in Europe, we see that that the French uh, and the British startups are very strong. Germ uh, Germany is coming too. We have a, a strong hub in Berlin. Um, it really depends on the business unit. There are difference, uh, there are, uh, differentiations between uh, automotive, uh, um, so between all the business units we have. But I think um, I don't have no exact figures. But the the uh, the feedback is is according to the size of the startup ecosystems, and we we search globally for open Bosch. It doesn't matter if where this startup is located. It's about this the best solution for the pain point and it's not about if this startup is close by okay so maybe we give you the possibility to show your last slide there is still someone typing for another question but um or a comment maybe but uh no i just Thanks wanted to a lot. i had a cliffhanger yes. at the beginning uh giving you yes. the the the, uh, the question of uh, what are the 
um, the number of corporates established, and uh, most of them, uh, I think there was only one person who typed in 15, right? So um, the question was, what was the question again? I'm making it, uh, no, it's my, so in the, the question was, um, waiting for the players. Uh, ah, so no, Michael, 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 Michael had the right answer. Michael had the right answer. So. <laughs> Typing it now, I get the answer already. Yeah, so at the end, uh, venture clienting, it, it, it's not too serious here. Of course, there are many, many corporations out there who do something similar. I, I saw on the invitation list, uh, ZF or, or uh, SAPIO. And they're also doing screening, scouting, they're doing PUCs. There are so many corporations who do something similar, but the, 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 the corporations we see, the colleagues who really have a dedicated venture client unit, we are in close contact with, are basically those 15 corporations and um, they have their own dedicated venture client unit and follow the same approach and seeing that that it's 15 in europe and that there's basically no one outside or only only um uh corporates with a more mixed setup is is i think interesting is really interesting for us and i think it's still on the growing part there's there's still uh, a lot to uh, to uh, to change on this setup there's a lot of potential then to uh, spread the news. So um, I, I look a oh. little bit at the time. So. Yeah, you didn't yeah. see my screen, right? I was I was not sharing my screen lately, or no? The, before the last the oh, last yeah. question, we didn't anyway. share the screen, but we heard what you said. So there's still a lot of things to do. Everyone is uh, thanking you and uh, for the interesting exchange that people want to continue. So let's find a way to continue this uh, exchange. And um, I must say it was one of the, let's say, webinars where we had the most questions and exchange. So I think it's a really, it's a good topic. And uh, let's see how we can continue the conversation. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, have a nice evening and speak to you very soon. And we'll, we'll catch up to see what we can. Uh, oh, we exceeded expectations, Peter. Thank you. So um, have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.